Hello everyone, this is what I'm going to show you how to quickly create an entourage element with a shadow that always faces the camera. And it's kind of a, an elaboration off of this video that I created a while back. This is more about isolating the image in Photoshop. In the very end, I, I included a kind of a bonus feature of how to create a SketchUp Face Me component. This video will be a little bit more explained in how you do that. In Photoshop, if you happen to have a nicely isolated image or layer such as this, all you really need to do is with the selection tool, control or command click on that layer and it will create the selection for you. And then what you would want to do is go to select and then click on inverse to select the opposite. I'll explain why here in a couple of minutes, but I'll deselect. If you don't have a conveniently isolated image, such as this, which again, I, I showed you how to do in this video, but maybe you've got one with a white background. So let me flatten this just to show you how you would do it then. So maybe it's a tree, maybe it's a person, maybe it's a, a mailbox, I don't know, but you've got a nice solid background that's fairly easy to select out. Well, I'll grab the marquee tool and I'll set my tolerance to something like six. You want it pretty low. I'll hold down shift as I select these white areas. And this might be good enough, but I can see here, there's a little bit of a halo that I wanna get rid of. And I also am going to want to select this little area here, there we go. So if I don't want that halo to show up, that white halo, I'm going to go to select and inverse once again. So that swaps it around. And then I'll go to select, modify, contract. And you know, three pixels is probably good. Depending on your image, it may be more or less. Then select inverse again. If you have any questions of why I did it in that order, just try it the other way and maybe you'll answer your own question. But trust me, that's what you wanna do. So getting the selection is kind of the tricky part. Then you'll want to go to your paths dialog under window and paths if it's not open. And there is a button here that will make a path. And you can name and organize these just like you can layers and bring them back up. So now I've got a vector path in Photoshop. Here is a really cool, not very well known feature, but you can export those paths to Illustrator. And I've got a bunch of junk in my download folder here. But what I like to do is either name things test or temp or something because these are just temporary files that I'll want to delete down the road eventually. So that's why I'm, I'm usually big about naming things conventionally and smartly. But if it's a junky name, a good rule of thumb is just to delete it later on. But I've opened that file up. I am now an illustrator. It doesn't look like there's anything here, but if I do a command or a control A and zoom out, I can see there is something here. It just doesn't have any styles that allows me to see it. But Illustrator is really going to be a short stop because all we're doing here is exporting it as a DWG or a DXF. So I'll just keep that in the same folder. Again, the name can be kind of junky because these are just temporary for this longer process that is actually not too long. Now I'm in SketchUp, third application. I believe you have to have the pro version in order to do this, but in order to import a DWG, there might be some free plugins if you have the free version, but I've got the pro version and I will select that file and go ahead and import it. And it looks like this. So we wanna get this down to size now. So what I'll do is I'll measure from maybe there's my measure tool. I will click on a geometry and maybe click up here. Important that you wanna click on a geometry, otherwise this next step will change. It'll either draw a construction line or a construction point. So I'm going to click right here and I can see that that is right now 31 feet, which is way too big. But if I type five feet, four inches and hit enter, it'll prompt me if I want to resize the model. Now, Justin is about the right size. Let's erase that construction line. Here is why I wanted to export the opposite, the, the contents, this bounding box here, because when you go back to Photoshop, and I maybe should have did this when I was here the first time, but I'm going to save this, and once again, just give it a name that I know so I can delete it. And 
I'm going to save it as a JPEG because I know that will strip out any transparency. Sometimes transparency issues can cause problems, especially if you want to cast accurate shadows with your face meet component. Anyway, let's save that file. Back to SketchUp, file import once again, and I'm going fast because I know you can slow this down in YouTube as you want to, maybe. And I will select all supported image types. Make sure that it's set as image, not texture or matched photo. Navigate to that image that you just created, import. And now I can conveniently snap this to that origin corner and I can snap it anywhere up top here. When I showed you in this part, the last kind of few minutes of this much longer video, I showed you a much more complicated way to do it. So hopefully this will make this video worthwhile. A couple of last steps here. I will select everything, right click and explode. And if you're lucky, that will be enough for you. Notice that it, I can now select Justin and he is selected. Sometimes you have to do that a couple of times. So right click and either explode or intersect with selection. That's the one you may have to do a couple times. Right click, select everything, intersect with selection. And you want to be able to hopefully conveniently just click and not have anything else selected. Otherwise, you gotta hunt around and kind of find out where there might be a leak. Now, I could grab the eraser tool and go and erase everything I don't want, but it's easier to select what you want to keep. And in this case, it is this face and the edges that define it. And you can select those by double clicking. So now, oops, and I've got a little bit of a, a bleeder here, it looks like, yep, so that's connected. So a little cleanup, I'll just grab my pencil tool, draw a line like that. There we go, that's what I want to see. I've got Justin and the edges that define him selected. Now with the select tool, I'll move my cursor out here, hold down shift, that turns it into the swap tool. So which means anything that's selected becomes deselected and vice versa. Now I can just hit delete and we've only got Justin and the edges that define him. And you can select all of those either by dragging a selection window or double clicking. Now, if you double click and hold down shift once again and single click, that will deselect the face and only has the edges selected, which is nice because you gotta be a little careful here, but you should be able to right click on that edge and select hide. So the edge is still there, it's just hidden. It just shows up a little bit better when this is a face me component. Let's, let's get him raised up so he's in the blue direction and not taking a nap. I will select everything, grab the rotation tool. Now, most of the time you, or at least I recommend that you use a click release click methodology for most of these tools. Here's an example where you want to click and drag. So I'm going to click on the origin and drag. I'm holding the mouse button and I'm dragging in the red direction. That allows me to specify that rotation angle. So if I let go, the rotation tool now still wants two more clicks. So I will click on the green axis to start and click on the blue to stop. Or I can do that if I'm bored. But I want to click on the blue direction so that gets him facing up in the right direction. Almost done. I will select everything again just to make sure. Go to edit and make component, not a group, I want to make a component. That brings up this dialog. Good idea to name these. Now we're creating files we want to keep. These are no longer temporary files. And we want to set the component axes to probably a part that's touching the ground, probably a foot, maybe between his feet. So that is now set the axes there. And I always want this to face the camera. Hit create, there we go. Now I can right click and save this to my collection of entourage, or I can go to edit and copy and add this to my little collection of students. I use a shortcut for paste. There you go. So there, there that's how you make an entourage anything into a face me component. Hopefully that's helpful.